Hello and welcome to the screencast on plotting basic functions in two dimensions in MATLAB. This is a very important screencast because we'll be looking at several commands at the heart of MATLAB's powerful plotting and visualization abilities. We'll be learning how plotting works in MATLAB and how it's different from graphing calculators and computer algebra systems, how to plot a basic 2D mathematical function in MATLAB, one that has one input variable and one output variable, and how to put multiple plots on the same set of axes. Before we begin, you need to make sure that you viewed the screencast called Vectors in MATLAB. First, let's talk about how plotting works in MATLAB. MATLAB's method for plotting functions is pretty similar to how you learned to plot functions in middle school. Back then, you were given a formula to work with, like y equals x squared, and the way you learned how to plot was you first generated a list of x values to try out. Then you plug those x values into your formula to create a list of y values that, by the way, has the same length as the list of the x values. This amounts to creating a bunch of ordered pairs. Then you plot those ordered pairs as points on a set of axes, and then somehow you connected the dots in a logical way. You didn't really plot functions so much as you plotted data points that were generated by a function. That's how MATLAB's plotting works too. The basic workflow is exactly what we just described. There's just one little change. When we talk about lists of values for us in MATLAB, those lists are vectors. Let's look at a simple example in MATLAB of how this all works. So let's take a simple linear function, say y equals 3x minus 2, and see if we can get MATLAB to produce a plot. So first let's create a vector that can hold our input values. Let's say x equals negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So remember we said a vector is like a row or a column in a spreadsheet. This vector is like the x column in the table of points you're about to plot. Now we need to create a vector of y values to go along with those x values. And we're going to do that just by using our built-in MATLAB functions. Let's define y equal to 3 times x minus 2. Remember to put the star in there between the 3 and the x because MATLAB does not understand multiplication by juxtaposing. Hit enter and there's my y variables and my y values. Now let's plot these points. So basically I've just created five x, y pairs that I can plot. To do this, the command I'm going to use is simply plot. Type plot, parenthesis, x, comma, y. And hit enter. And this will bring up a new window containing a basic plot of the function. Now that's the basic gist behind almost all plotting that MATLAB does. Let's look at some details here. Close this window out. First of all, let's try another example. This time we'll try the basic parabola y equals x squared. Let's uh, keep our current vector for x, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, but now let's define a new uh, variable for y, y equals x squared. Now hit enter, and remember, you're going to get an error message when you do that because x is not a symbolic variable. It's a vector. It's a list of numbers. And if I want to square a vector, what I really mean is I want to square each element in the vector. In other words, I need to use element-wise squaring. That requires me typing a dot, y equals x dot squared. That's a detail that really matters, so remember this. MATLAB does not plot symbolic functions. It only plots data. Squaring data requires the element-wise operations to happen. So let's hit enter here, and you see I've now squared every element in x. Now let's plot the resulting points. Plot x, y, and I have this. Now it doesn't look so good, does it? Why isn't it nice and smooth? Well, remember, MATLAB only plots data, and the only data we have plotted here are five points. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. MATLAB only plots those five points and then draws straight lines to connect the dots. Now with only five points, the graph is going to look pretty blocky, so the solution here is just to simply add more points into our x variable. Let's go back to to the MATLAB screen and redefine x with more points in it. Let's have it start at negative 2 and end at 2 like it did before, but just have more points. Uh, it's easy to do that using the lin space command. Let's let x equal lin space negative 2 to 2. This is going to create a vector that begins at negative 2, ends at 2, but now there are 100 points in between. And I don't want to see those 100 points, so I'm going to use a semicolon. Now let's try to re-execute the plot. If I type plot x, y, I ought to get something good, right? No, I get an error message. Now, why did I get an error message this time? Well, the answer we can find by looking over in the workspace window. And look at x and y. x is a 1 by 100 vector. There are 100 elements in it. But y is not. y is still the same vector that we had before. Uh, so just like in Algebra 1, if your x and y lists don't match up, you can't plot the points. So here's a very important fact about working with plotting in MATLAB. Even though I defined y to be x squared, 
Y is not a symbol, it is a list of numbers. And if I change X to give it more entries like I did, then I, Y will not automatically update itself. We have to go update it ourselves. So let's go back over to the command window and type Y equals X squared all over again. Suppress the output, and now you see in the workspace window, X and Y match up. Now let's go through and replot our, our function here. Plot, sorry, we don't plot functions, we plot data. Plot X, Y, and back in figure one, this looks much, much better now, doesn't it? So let's look at a couple of basic activities you might want to do with plots. Uh, first of all, how can I get more than one plot on the same set of axes? Well, let's try this. Let's try to put Y equals sine x on the same set of axes as y equals x squared. So let's go back and redefine x equal lin space negative 2 to 2. Suppress the output there and y equals x squared. Remember to use the dot because we're element y squaring. Now I don't want to type y equals sine x because that'll wipe out the y I just created. So let's call it y2 equals sine x and suppress the output. So now I've got the same x, two different y's. Now if I plot x and y That'll produce my parabola I saw a while ago. Now, if at this point I go in and try to just plot x, y2, you might think that it'll put the sine x plot on the same set of axes, but what actually happens is that it replaces the parabola that I just created. Now, I don't really want to do that. I want to get the sine x and the y squared on the same set of axes. So one thing to remember is that when you are plotting a function, the next time you plot a function, it wipes out the earlier one. Now, if you don't want that to happen, let's close this out, and let's cycle back through, replot this. To get the sine x graph on the same set of axes, I'm going to have to use a new command, and that is hold. And I want hold on. So hold on will place a hold on the current plot. And now if I execute this, any future plots that I make will go in the same set of axes. So now if I plot x and y2, hit that, go to figure one, now I see both graphs on the same set of axes. Now, if at this point I am done with a set of axes, I can go back in and type hold off. And that now the next plot that I do will wipe out the figure and start a new one. For example, if I type y3 equal to x cubed, okay, and I'll plot x and y3, the figure one will now consist only of the y equals x cubed plot. Now, on the flip side of this, what if I wanted to create a new figure, a uh, new plot, in addition to the one that I have open. So I don't maybe want to plot y equals x to the fourth, and I don't want to overwrite this plot, but I also don't want to put it on the same set of axes. I just want to have two plot windows. Well, the way to do that is to execute another command, and that command is figure. Figure will create a blank plot window. And now that's the active window. If I go through here and type y4 equal to x to the fourth power, and plot x, y4, that fourth power graph will show up in figure two, and I've got figure one and it hasn't been wiped out, and they are separate windows. So let's recap what we've learned. First of all, very importantly, MATLAB plots data, not symbols. So the way that we plot is to, first of all, we have to generate a vector of numbers for inputs, and then we have to use our formula that we're interested in plotting to create a vector of outputs. Then we plot, actually create the plot that we're interested in by using the plot command to plot points, and then MATLAB will automatically connect the dots for us. If the plot happens to look blocky, it means that there's not enough dots, and we need to go back and redefine the input vector so that there's more stuff in it. Oftentimes we do this using the lin space command rather than entering in data points by hand. But remember also, if you go back and change the vector of inputs, the vector of outputs will not automatically update itself. You have to go back and recalculate the outputs before you try to plot, otherwise you'll get an error message. Finally, a couple of tricks. If you want to put two more than one plot on the same set of axes, use the hold on command. And then if you want to create a new blank figure for a new plot without killing off the old plots, use the figure command to do that. That's all for now. There will be a screencast, too, that's a sequel to this, about the plot tools window, and it'll show you how to manipulate properties of your plot, such as the color and the thickness, interactively. Thanks for watching.